Good morning and good afternoon. I'm Bo Gyun Shim, head of UN project office, a part of DPIDG UN DESA. It's a great honor to be here with you. This is an overview of my presentation. Data governance is an approach to setting policies and regulations establishing leadership for institutional coordination and national strategy, nurturing and enabling data ecosystem and streamlining data management. Data governance starts from data production and it comprises data management, opening, sharing, analysis, and usage of data. In data creation and production, data standardization for quality data is required. Those standardization enables data disaggregation and interoperability. In data analysis and usage, privacy should be protected. And data security should be ensured in data storage at the data center. There has been a rapid increase in the amount of data in recent years. While there was a steady increase in the world population over the years, the number of network devices, the amount of data produced, and the data market size have grown rapidly since 2013. As a result, there is a big gap in data governance among the expected demands of what is data, where we store data, what to do with the rapidly increasing amount of data, and who is accountable for any data or privacy breach with the reality. Why do we need data governance? Compared to the rapid rise in data production, a lot of precious data is not managed or shared well. Sometimes, nobody knows even how much data there is in their organizations and what data they can share due to concerns about data security and privacy. There are many cases where produced data are hidden and locked in a personal file without seeing the light. So sometimes invaluable data is not used for a long time. So there is a strong need to have chief data officers charged with explaining the strategic value of data and its important role as a business asset and revenue driver to executives, employees, customers, and citizens. And data ombudsman is needed to monitor and produce preventive measures for personal data and privacy breaches. Risk-informed governance starts from evidence-based risk assessments. Then risks can be managed and communicated in a user-friendly format and uh, visualization. Responsive governance requires capturing more precise needs and the demands of people to respond efficiently, effectively to people's real needs. Then the government can expect compliance and trust from citizens in government intervention. The rapid increase of data in the past post-COVID-19 has called for the importance of data governance. One is to conduct a real-time situation analysis and contact tracing for effective containment. Two is to counter misinformation. Three is to identify and address special vulnerabilities and needs of vulnerable groups by gathering disaggregated data. More specifically speaking, uh, governments protect personal data through laws and regulations and policy frameworks. Second, governments have, uh, have to practice the whole of society efforts and increase stakeholder engagement through policy, institutional, and technical coordination. Third, it is critical to strengthen data security and aid resilience in preparation for system failure. Fourth, generating disaggregated data by gender, 
age and disability is imperative for accurate assessment of the situation and addressing inequalities by ident identifying the groups most affected and their special vulnerabilities and demands during the pandemic. Fifth, effective and timely data release by governments is the key to risk communication to the public and building public trust in government. Governmental website, uh, social media, and mobile apps should be used actively for risk communication. As the amount of data grows, the use of data continues to expand and the cost of storing huge amounts of data is also increasing. However, cloud technology allows data to be stored remotely and accessed from multiple devices. According to UK government uh, security classifications, about 85% of the country's data is official data, which includes routine business operative and services. And about 15% of the country's data is top secret and secret data, which uh, are breach uh, cloud, uh, could cause loss of life or threaten the security and the economic well-being of the country. Data centers are physical buildings or spaces that are used to house networked computer systems or service servers. However, data centers need a physical data backup center which entails maintenance costs. A cloud data center moves a traditional on-prem data center off-site. An organization can lease infrastructure to a third-party partner for management. Unlike data centers, cloud data centers entail lesser costs with no need for a physical data backup center. Now, I move on to the part on data governance for a green city. In this part, I would like to highlight the importance of data and the effective data governance for building green cities. Firstly, harnessing data is essential for cities to assess their situations and understand where they stand and identify the challenges on environmental issues, including responses to climate change by reducing carbon emissions and building a green society. Data governance enables evidence-based decision-making by using climate data for setting goals, identifying priorities, and effective means of implementation, etc. Data and effective data governance are also important for awareness raising and motivating participation and actions by citizens. I would like to introduce the city climate data management framework and the maturity assessment tool developed by C40 as a reference on data governance for green cities. It is composed of five major themes, which are one is data management strategy, two is data quality and assurance, three is leadership and governance, four is technology and systems, and five is data use and decision making. Among the five major themes of climate data management, I would like to particularly focus on the third theme, leadership and governance. The five elements under this theme are one is culture, two is leadership and endorsement, three is skills and training, four is capacity, five is governance arrangements. I would like to introduce a country case. The city of Sydney has established clear environmental performance targets across greenhouse gas emissions, energy consumption, water consumption, waste to landfills, and emissions from 
transport and the CD uses the CCAP CD tool to inform its analysis and reporting on these environmental performance targets. The tool is uh, used to aggregate, analyze, and report disparate urban data to drive more informed and dynamic decision making and tracks and monitors the environmental sustainability performance targets of sustainable Sydney 2030. Now let's move on to the part on data governance for a sustainable smart city. As with many other aspects of modern society, the creation of smart cities relies on the intelligent use of data. If a city does not use the information wisely and responsibly, it can lead to a failure of the planned initiatives and a lack of public uh, trust. The goal is to use the data for quality of life impr improvements as well as to instill confidence into the population that the systems are working effectively. Massive amounts of data pass through smart cities. One could say the smart city cities relies, rely on data, while smart sustainable cities rely on data governance. Smart cities are data driven, but massive data collection is not a panacea unless proper governance is in place. In fact, in the long run, improving the efficiency of data use may well involve minimizing data volumes. Sustainable data governance incorporates data from all relevant sources, focuses on diverse values for all stakeholders, and aligns with strategic objectives for and by residents as shown in this slide. Smart city governance must focus on these three elements to achieve inclusivity. A narrow focus on only one or two of these areas of sustainability can exclude some communities from benefiting from smart city initiatives. A sustainable city is essentially an inclusive city. The quality, availability, and integrity of the data and how they are governed have impacts on how human rights are protected, how attractive the city is to businesses, the level of governance productivity and inclusiveness, environmental sustainability, and ultimately how uh, livable the city is. Data governance is su supported by the dynamic relationship between policies, institutions, people, processes, and enabling technologies. The first and second pillars highlight the importance of legitimizing and institutionalizing policies for effective leadership. The third pillar, the data ecosystem, reflects the relationship between data processes and public engagement. And the fourth pillar highlights the adaptive application of technologies in supporting data use and governance. Smart city data governance and management must enable cities and businesses to turn data into benefits with, while ensuring public buy-in, achieving those uh, twin goals, benefits and buy-in, requires setting a smart data strategy at the start. A seven-layer model uh, through which smart cities can achieve the data governance and the management that they need, the model begins with preparing for the data categories of the future. It then creates tools and processes for informed consent, for a secure and efficient collection, anonymization and storage, and for secure and tiered access. It finally offers a platform for rapid, innovative monetization. Smart city success requires engagement with civic authorities since coordination among the different levels of government is often a top smart city challenge. 
This slide proposes a framework for social inclusion in smart cities through data uh, governance. The framework serves as a prescriptive framework of how the application of data can improve smart city inclusion. It is presented as a structure that can help to address social, political, legal, cultural, and ethical concerns that have impacts on exclusion in smart cities. The framework should be considered in developing a data governance structure for smart cities. The uh, right data, uh, algorithms, and people and the policies standards. This is a case study on the municipal urban information system implemented in 2014 by the Rio de Janeiro uh, city government in Brazil. The purpose of establishing the system, system was to gather, manage, integrate, and update data and the information on the city of Rio de Janeiro. Establishing an efficient uh, communication channel among the departments. Before the implementation of CRB, the workflow for data sharing within the city government was not well defined and this compromised data driven decision making. The system came to organize the flow of data and the information with integrated and coordinated logistics and the procedures. It is important to emphasize that data governance is very essential for building resilient cities. Resilience broadly refers to the ability to survive, adapt, and thrive, no matter what stresses and shocks we experience. It should be noted that resilience is everyone's businesses and innovative technologies remain a means to an end. Resilient cities also refer to cities that can absorb, recover, and prepare for future shocks, be it economic, environmental, social, and institutional. Building resilience requires enhancing the city's inclusive and resilient development, integrating DRR CCA in policies and development plans, investing in urban design and green and adaptive infrastructure, risk informed decision making and early warning systems, and so on. This slide highlights four main areas that drive resilience economy, society, governance, and the environment factor. Data governance includes measuring city resilience. Measuring city resilience can be done through these dimensions of economy, society, governance, and the environment, as illustrated in the figure above. This case study is about a smart facility application in Cape Town, South Africa. The smart facility was developed and implemented in 2009 to integrate all required data related to municipal facilities and their consumption as an energy efficient project. The purpose of this project was to develop a data driven online application that could assist with automating the data analytics while monitoring the performance of municipal facilities, tracking and monitoring electricity savings achieved through the implementation of energy efficiency and renewable energy interventions, and so on. When we look back on the aforementioned presentations today, we can say as follows, a smart city will enhance the convenience and happiness of citizens and create a competitive edge. The presence of a data ombudsman is needed to ensure storage, data storage, data authentication, and the data is useful and ethical. The role of the chief data officer is emphasized as CDOs can enable integration among systems by bringing in the right perspectives. 
ensuring data transparency and communication with the stakeholders under a whole of society approach is essential. It is important the city governments ensure the inclusion of vulnerable groups by harnessing disaggregated data and collaborate with other stakeholders. Thank you for your kind attention and patience.